Hey everyone. Uh, we'll get there. <laughs> Can we get everyone to sit back down? <laughs> oh, there we go. <laughs> ah, all right. Hello, everyone. Um, <laughs> Um, the passage we're going to be going through today is Matthew 16, verses 1 to 12. So I'm just going to read through that, and then I'll kind of go over what we're talking about. Um, so verse 1 says, And the Pharisees and Sadducees came, and to test, them, test him, they asked him to show them a sign from heaven. He answered them, When it is evening, you say, It will be fair weather, for the sky is red. And in the morning, it will be stormy, for the sky is red and threatening. You know how to interpret the appearance of the sky, but you cannot interpret the signs of the times. An evil and adulterous generation seeks for a sign, but no sign will be given to it except the sign of Jonah. So he left them and departed. When the disciples reached the other side, they had forgotten to bring any bread Jesus said to them, Watch and beware of the leaven of the Pharisees. And they began discussing among themselves, saying, We brought no bread. But Jesus, aware of this, said, O you of little faith, why are you discussing among yourselves the fact that you have no bread? Do you not perceive, do you not remember the five loaves for the five thousand and how many baskets you gathered? or the seven loaves for the 4,000 and how many baskets you gathered. How is it that you fail to understand that I did not speak about bread? Beware of the leaven of the Pharisees. Then they understood that he did not tell them beware of the leaven of the bread, but of the teaching of the Pharisees and Sadducees. So the, uh, the main idea that I see in this passage is faith. And I'm going to talk about a few different pieces. I'm going to break the passages down into four verse pieces and then reread them and talk through the themes about each piece. Um, the first one is going to be about the Pharisees coming to Jesus and demanding a sign. The second is going to be Jesus telling his disciples about the leaven of the Pharisees. And then the third is Jesus talking about the signs and teachings and some of the things the disciples need to pay attention to. So I'm just going to read the first, um, first piece again. Um, and it says, And the Pharisees and Sadducees came, and to test him, they asked him to show them a sign from heaven. He answered them, saying, When it is evening, you say, When it is evening, you say, It will be fair weather, for the sky is red, and in the morning it will be stormy today for the sky is red and threatening. You know how to interpret the appearance of the sky, but you cannot interpret the signs of the times. An evil and adulterous generation seeks for a sign, but no sign will be given to it except the sign of Jonah. So he left them and departed. The first portrait I want you to see is the picture of Jesus with the disciples. Um, or sorry, with the um, Pharisees and Sadducees. So the signs of Jesus were meant to actually build faith, uh, induce repentance, and, um, and show the kingdom that Jesus is bringing. The Pharisees had been present for these past signs and willfully rejected what the signs meant. Um, signs of like turning water to wine, signs of feeding 5,000 people or healing the blind, um, all, all miracles. And um, so 
this picture of Jesus with the Pharisees is of Jesus not using his power because the Pharisees have already rejected Jesus and are just trying to actually get him to fail here. The, fail, uh, the Pharisees are obstinate in, not, uh, in rejecting Jesus, and um, the Pharisees are explicit in asking for a sign from heaven, and their purpose is to be hostile towards Jesus and to test him. Jesus is also pretty harsh with the Pharisees here, and I think a big reason for this is they're being willfully blind in rejecting Jesus, and this is going to be in contrast with verses 5 to 8, where the disciples are trying to understand Jesus, but they're still on a different wavelength than him. Um, yeah, here the Pharisees do willfully reject Jesus and who he is and what he's doing, and Jesus doesn't want to be part of that. He doesn't want to just do miracles as magic tricks to show off, and God doesn't want to willfully reject. God doesn't want us to willfully reject his teaching either. When Jesus talks to the Pharisees about knowing how to read the weather and the sky, he is referring to talents that are actually very impressive. It doesn't take a short amount of time to learn how to do that, and I think Jesus wanted the Pharisees and the disciples to know about God and his heart as well. Not just the physical realm, but spiritual understanding as well. And as Christians, I think we often need to be cautious about the way we ask some of our questions of faith. Are we asking them for the right reasons to build faith and to know God's heart more? Or are we just trying to test God like the Pharisees? I do think it is important and actually vital that we ask good questions, especially the hard ones that we don't answer, have answers to. I also think that we need to trust that Jesus loves us and knows what's best for us, and, um, and his love is shown in his signs and teachings. Um, for verse 4, Jesus is telling them, that they've already seen all the signs they need and will not need any more, other than the sign of Jonah, which is where Jonah went into the belly of a whale for three days and then came out, and in the same way, Jesus is saying that he'll go into death for three days and come out three days later um, and, um, yeah, and rise to life again. But where the Pharisees and disciples are at, they aren't quite on that same wavelength and aren't able to perceive what he's actually saying there. So, um, yeah, on to point two. Uh, the second point is Jesus telling his disciples about the leaven of the Pharisees. And I'll reread this four verse section again. When the disciples reached the other side, they had forgotten to bring any bread. Jesus said to them, watch and beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and Sadducees. And they began discussing it among themselves, saying, We have no bread. But Jesus, aware of this, said, O you of little faith, why are you discussing among yourselves the fact that you have no bread? The second portrait I want you to see is Jesus with the disciples and the picture of faith here. The disciples are not the religious leaders, but they do have faith and want to know Jesus and his teaching. They don't reject Jesus, but they are a little slow in understanding, and Jesus can work with that. This is in contrast with portrait one, where the Pharisees didn't have faith and were outright rejecting Jesus and his signs. And Jesus isn't a puppet to just play with. He would not work with the Pharisees because they didn't want Jesus. But the disciples, even though they had only a little faith, it was enough for Jesus to work with. Jesus is willing to pour his time and life into these disciples because they had faith, even though it was just a little. In verses 6 and 7, the disciples are worried about a lack of food, not grasping Jesus' metaphor of leaven as false teaching. They're still hearing it as literal bread. And this is significant because um, it had happened a few times 
just before this where Jesus' disciples um, were there and um, Jesus had actually provided for the 5,000 people with just a few um, loaves and fishes and then <clears throat> again with 4,000 people. So Jesus had taken care of them quite recently with this like physical need for food, but they're still not quite at that point of trusting Jesus fully. And with, ta- with faith and time, the disciples will understand more of what Jesus is trying to say, but for now, they're just yeah, not quite on that same wavelength as Jesus yet. Um, I have a g- good group of friends. We hang out most Saturday evenings, and I think that's been over the last three and a half years. Um, I usually send out a message before they come over, and um, I don't really need to communicate much about um, what's going to happen. I say, like, hey, I'm hosting this weekend, and for me, um, a lot of them are on the same wavelength, and so I just say I'm hosting, and they can fill in the gaps of it's going to be Saturday, it's going to be at 5.30 p.m. at my house, and we're going to play um, volleyball in the summers or Dutch Blitz in the winters, and these are all things that they just know um, without me having to say them. And I think that um, my friends are able to understand what I'm communicating well, even if I don't communicate that well. And I'm really curious, if the disciples were on the same wavelength as Jesus, what would Jesus have taught them instead? Rather than the conversation being about a little faith, what greater things would Jesus have to teach his disciples if they had more faith and were on the same wavelength. I also wonder what it would look like if we had a little more faith and trust in God. And what would Jesus teach me if I had a little more faith and was a little bit more attuned to his wavelength? Um, Section 3. So, I'm just going to read verses 9 to 12 again. Do you not perceive, do you not remember the five loaves for the 5,000 and how many baskets you gathered? Or the seven loaves for the 4,000 and how many baskets you gathered? How is it that you fail to understand that I did not speak about bread? Beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and Sadducees. Then they understood that he did not tell them, Beware of the leaven of the bread but of the teaching of the Pharisees and Sadducees. If I had to sum this section up, it would be Jesus saying to his disciples, be careful about what you accept when listening to the Pharisees teach. They don't have faith for God, and they don't understand the signs and miracles, and have rejected Jesus. So, they don't have a basis to teach properly. I think these verses apply to us today, too. As Christians, we need to have more faith and trust Jesus and his teachings. The signs of feeding people point towards who Jesus is and his authority. Even nature does what he says in multiplying fish and bread. When Jesus tells his disciple about the leaven of the Pharisees, his disciples were still so focused on their material needs that they did not that they're not ready for the spiritual message that Jesus is ready to teach them and trying to teach them. This leads into the next section of Matthew that Alex will be speaking on next week. And the disciples are finally able to understand more of who Jesus is. And this is more than halfway through the book of Matthew. And they're finally available and almost ready to know who Jesus actually is. If I had to guess, many of us are also on that journey and feeling more like the disciples sometimes, missing metaphors or not understanding God's plan and always questioning Jesus' teaching and wondering if maybe we know better. In the last two verses, Jesus again comments about the leaven of the Pharisees. And when Jesus repeats something, it's usually important. 
So three times in verses 5 to 12, Jesus will say, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and Sadducees. The leaven of the Pharisees is referring to false teaching, and Jesus is teaching his disciples to pay close attention when the Pharisees are teaching and not simply accept everything they're saying. The Greek word for beware here refers more to turning your mind towards or to pay close attention to. And the translators use the word beware as it fits the context quite well. This isn't to say, though, that there were no good Pharisees. There are, they are the religious leaders of the time, and some of the scriptures they're reading and teaching is correct. But Jesus has already said, said and shown that the Pharisees are fully rejecting him and God's plan for bringing the kingdom and for bringing renewal as well. So if their heart is not for Jesus and their heart is not for God and they also can't, then they also can't be completely trusted to teach God's will, even if some of what they're teaching is right. That is why the disciples are to beware, pay a close attention to their teaching. Because some of what they're saying is not right. And just Jesus' disciples need to be able to discern that. This also applies to us today as followers of Jesus. A good portion of my life is spent working in some way or another. I have a full-time job and have worked a couple of these jobs over the past 10 years, and I've had at least one good mentor at each of the three places I've worked. Each of these mentors teaches me different things, how to listen, how to be organized, how to treat others kindly, how to be really good at my work, how to take feedback, and how to prioritize, so on. Often my mentors are good people and teach me with good intentions and help me become better. And I try to take the feedback and learn. I also see that there are subtle lies that each of my mentors try to teach me intentionally or not. Things like, do what is best for yourself, you come first, or it's not a big deal, no one, no one will know the discrepancy, or um, faith and work can be separate. And I think we need to beware and pay attention and discern these teachings. We need to look to Jesus in prayer and his examples in scripture if we are gonna discern properly. Jesus does have words to speak into each of the lies above, saying things like, love your neighbor as yourself, or as Paul will say further in scripture, he'll say, put others ahead of yourselves. What can we see in this passage, though, that relates to faith? Well, Jesus is the good teacher, and God is his priority. So we can have faith and trust in him fully and what he teaches us. There's a contrast here between the Pharisees and disciples. The Pharisees had a high place in society. They were educated, doubters, and as Jesus said, false teachers. Jesus asks for faith, not a great education and knowledge, not talents and gifts. And I'm not saying these are bad things, they're actually usually very good things. But I think Jesus is asking just for faith here and relationship with him. The Pharisees missed that. The disciples only had a little faith, but that's all Jesus needed. And the disciples did look to Jesus and were changed because of it. As I start to close, there's just a few things that I wanted to just go over again and... Um, I hope we can take these as more of the main points. I hope that we can immerse ourselves in Jesus' teaching too, and not just come to Jesus demanding signs like the Pharisees. I hope we can all pay close attention when people are teaching, especially when we see that God is not their priority, so that we can see even the subtle lies they're teaching and filter them out and grow in Jesus instead. Um, me trying to explain this passage and paint some portraits of faith isn't really going to change any of us, but Jesus can, and I hope we can all look towards Jesus as individuals and as a church, and he is the great teacher, and all he asks for is a little bit of faith for, 
us to start. I'm gonna close in prayer. God, we thank you for your scriptures and the um, teachings that you give us. Um, We do ask for faith to trust and honor you. And um, as we go this week, we pray that we will um, be more attuned to your spirit and um, be a little bit more on your wavelength Help us to continue to know you better, and we thank you for your love, and we pray for your blessing this week. Amen.